Welcome to Prepper Nation. I'm John. Thank you very much for being here, for hitting subscribe, thumbs up, blah, 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 blah whatever. <laughs> the point is I'm really bad at asking for the stuff that YouTubers are supposed to ask for. Uh, so hopefully, fingers crossed, y'all know what to do to help this platform grow. But I do appreciate you being here. So won't take up a lot of your time. Um, Newsweek. You know, two days ago, they put out an article and it kind of raised the old antenna up. I'll link the article down below so you can go read it for yourself if you want to do that. But uh could be bad things. Uh, could could be bad things on the horizon here for the United States outside of the normal bad things. OK, because this actually deals with Russia. High school students there. Uh, September the 1st, starting September the 1st, which is very symbolic. I'll explain why in a second. But they are going to have a change of curriculum. Uh, September the 1st is symbolic because a lot of history folks, not everyone, they're not all in agreement, but I also believe that September the 1st was the first day of World War II. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if that's random, you know, as a coincidence or if it means something bigger, but um, they're going to be starting again on September the 1st. Uh, in Russia, high school students are going to be learning about the big, the big old bombs, the mass booms. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the effects of those and how to survive those should it come to that. Uh, this was signed in to law by the president over there all the way back in August of 2023, which really wasn't a long time ago. But at the rate things are going, man, does that seem like a long time ago? It seems like a decade ago almost. Uh, it was signed into law. And along with them learning about the big old boom booms and how to survive, they're going to be learning uh, basic military training throughout their high schools, small arms training and, and weaponry and stuff like this. First aid, military style first aid. And they're going to be also looking uh, for, they're going to be trained on looking for potential threats around them and, and stuff like this and when to report things. So, again, you know, that it, it really, it echoes what Mr. Z did back in the day uh, over in that region of Europe. Because, you know, once that invasion started, Mr. Z realized, okay, in terms of manpower, we are eventually going to be overwhelmed. So he went in, he encouraged, and then some. sometimes he forced people to remember the, the wooden boom sticks they were handing out. This is how you use one, this sort of thing. This is the training. Uh, they were training them after the fact, you know, just in case they got overrun. Russia is going to begin to do this now as a precaution. Again, this this was signed back in uh, August of last year, and what it what it honestly means for Russia is full war mobilization. That's what's inbound. You would think they're already at war; they're fully mobilized. They are not. Uh, they have been using a lot of Cold War era stuff up to this point, and they have been using a lot of reservists up to this point. Um, and of course, you know, some, some mainline stuff as well, but they are saying that this is in response to NATO being in Poland. And so you have two sides over there of this powder keg of a conflict pointing at one another. Okay. And it, it doesn't really matter which side you pick on this, just so long as you understand that you have both sides blaming the other side. There's an interview coming out tonight on X encourage all of you to watch that we had talked about that some this morning uh on the radioactive podcast but i digress point is you know putin is over here he's pointing at nato he's saying nato is doing this and now he's preparing all the way down to the high school level so people know how to pick up the, these students are going to be able to handle their weaponry and also the standard loadout for nato you know, should they find stuff on the ground to be able to use it in this sort of thing? Um, and of course, NATO's pointing at him. They're saying, you you launched the invasion. 
Nobody's hitting the gas, uh, the brake pedal on this. You know, they're both flooring it gas wise, like a game of chicken. Y'all know what chicken is, right? Where two cars are just heading for each other. Neither side seems to be willing to swerve. Now, I do think that when it comes to NATO funding is an issue, and we're seeing that in the United States and all of that stuff in Congress. That's why you're seeing it. That's why it's such a big deal, because they're trying to match the mobilization uh, that has taken place in Russia, I think. If this report is accurate, and again, this is coming from Newsweek, which is mainstream media, so take it with 10 grains of salt. We never know if what we're seeing is accurate or not here in the United States. And that's that's a sad state of affairs within itself. But we never know if what we're seeing is accurate. However, I will link the, you know, the uh, deal down below. There'll be a link. You can click it. You can go read it. Uh, the law was signed into effect. Uh, I have verified that back in August. So whether or not they begin doing this in September, I have no idea. But that's what uh, is being reported. If it's accurate, Western countries are going to begin to follow suit because they're going to have to at this point. They're going to be pigeon. Our commander in chief, oh man, our commander in chief and his sterling staff, and this is all sarcasm, right, folks? <laughs> before that, before those comments come in, I'm being sarcastic. I'm, I'm not a fan of Biden, to say the least, but they have pigeonholed us to the point where we have to react now to whatever Putin decides to do. We have to react. We're just constantly reacting and things are building up and building up and building up. So if they're going through with a full war mobilization uh, over in that region of the world, you're going to begin to see Western countries, including the United States, doing the same thing. And this this will always lead you to shortages and rationing, not on every single item, all right, your common wartime staples. First thing that comes to mind, especially with the chaos in the Middle East, that we keep escalating, but but I digress, is fuel. You know, fuel is going to be one of those mainstay items. Uh, but But any sort of material, raw material that is used primarily for war, you're going to begin to see a shortage on it because if we fully mobilize in this country, you can believe that our military is going to take what they need first. And, and then whatever scraps are left over are left over for the civilian population rationing. Maybe, I mean, we'll see, but the thing is, and, and why the timing is so bad. And again, not only is it uh, symbolic of the start of world war two that started on September the 1st, but we also have an election coming up shortly thereafter, or or we're supposed to have an election coming up shortly thereafter. And there's going to be a lot of chaos coming along with that. So it, it's almost like I use the, uh, the analogy of playing chicken with cars, but it's like there are a bunch of different cars getting ready to collide. And that seems to be the time frame, you know, September to December somewhere around in there. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Again, when I saw the uh, the news article come out, I said, well, you know, it is mainstream media, so I don't know whether I should believe it or not. And they're reporting on an enemy. This enemy, uh, they're not entirely truthful themselves. You know, they do use propaganda and stuff like this. So who knows what's going on? But if that is the case, promise you we're going to see shortages starting middle of September when it comes to raw wartime materials. Let me know what you think in the comments. Take care. God bless.